we are doing thyroid model it is a demand side growth theory based on keynesian framework okay in the keynesian framework investment has one role that means it generate income in the short term but when we are talking about long run investment investment has dual role one role need it generate income and the other one it add to productive capacity okay they ask this in two marks also okay what are the dual role of investment so before i start the modern since i am talking about modern there are certain assumption on which is modern in face okay so let's look at the assumption of the modern so starting point is keynesian framework okay assumptions so every time we start the modern you have done the microeconomics okay when we do comparative static analysis we start with equilibrium we starting from equilibrium if demand increases what will happen to equilibrium okay what will happen at new equilibrium at new equilibrium output will be higher and price will be higher so we always start with equilibrium when we do comparative static analysis so in the case of dynamic analysis okay we will start with equilibrium okay so initially there is full income equilibrium okay economy start with full income equilibrium okay second thing we will consider two sector economy consisting of household and farm okay and when we are talking about household and farm okay their aggregate demand consists of c plus i consumption plus investment okay that means here we are not considering government no government we are considering no economy okay and we are looking at market mechanism we are looking at necessary points that means we are looking at market determine outcome with no government intervention okay so here we consider two sector model okay two sector household and farm their demand consists of consumption plus investment okay we have necessary policy that means we focus on the market determine outcome and there is no government intervention and it is a no economy that means there is no foreign interference we have third thing okay if you remember okay when we are doing consumption hypothesis in the long run there is a proportional relationship between consumption and income since we are doing long run analysis so saving will be proportional of income okay because if you remember consumption is a proportion of income in the long run so saving will also be proportion of income so this is also one of the assumption here okay fourth point x and is saving and investment and x cost saving and investment will be equal x and means desire of land so at the beginning of every year they are household that is determining how much to save okay at the beginning of every period okay they are firms okay that are planning how much to invest so both can differ okay that is why it is called x and desire okay finance whatever you want to say okay so saving can differ from investment if it is not clear look at the first year video okay this can differ saving can be greater than investment it can be less than investment one year it can be your xnt saving will be equal to xnt investment x cost means actual actual saving and investment okay actual saving and investment will be always equal okay for two marks they ask this question also okay x and t saving investment what is x and t saving investment and what is x for saving investment so they have assumed that x and t of finance saving investment and x for saving investment will be equal this part is clear yes no okay now one more simplified assumption is taken we are taking no depreciation that means we are taking net investment so net investment and gross investment is same okay net investment and gross investment is same because there is no depreciation okay or you can say net saving or gross saving is the same thing net investment and gross investment is the same thing okay six point no time lag involved 
in the adjustment of variable in the adjustment of variable so you have variable night saving investment okay so they will adjust in the same time period okay if you are taking period 2020 so saving and investment x and t saving and investment will adjust in the year 2020 itself not in the 2021 okay so no time so Heidel has assumed accelerator principle He has considered a simulator principle. The principle shows real investment decision. Right? It shows a real investment decision. Okay? So when output is increasing, okay, demand for capital and stock will also increase. Okay? Demand for capital and stock will also increase by a certain proportion. Okay? What is that proportion? Net that proportion we see. Okay? Can you everyone? This is what we mean by accelerator principle. When the economy is growing, when there is an increasing demand for output, okay, demand for capital and stock will also increase by some proportion of output. Okay, right? When demand for national output increases, okay, demand for capital and stock also increases or investment will increase, okay, by some proportion of your output. And that proportion is, is known uh, you can write capital C here for the time. This is clear. This C is constant. Okay, this C is constant, and this term. Generally, we have written delta I over delta Y because we have taken their investment. Okay, yet means the same thing. Here. This we call incremental incremental capital output ratio. Okay, delta K over delta Y is called incremental capital output ratio when this ratio is constant okay it will be equal to proportion also capital output ratio okay that means capital output ratio is constant capital output ratio is constant and is equal to c so in the model okay capital output ratio is assumed to be constant Okay, and how it is due through accelerator principle. And what is accelerator principle? It is demand for capital and stock are your demand for national output increases. Okay, and how much is the demand for capital and stock? It is some proportion of your national output. Demand for capital and stock okay, is some proportion of your increasing national output. So through accelerator principle, we see that okay, demand for capital and stock is some proportion of your output, which is C. Okay, and this C is constant. So capital output ratio is constant. And in the previous lecture, I have shown you that if capital output ratio is constant, then capital labor ratio is constant. Okay, this is point number eight. So when I write capital output constant, dividing both sides by L. Can I do that? Yes, no. When I divide numerator and denominator by n, this ratio will remain constant. Okay. Yeah, so when capital output ratio remain constant, so capital neighbor ratio will also remain constant. Okay. To synchronize, capital neighbor ratio also remains constant. Okay. Now, when I am taking capital labor ratio to be constant, okay, it has important bearing on the kind of production function that we are assuming. Okay, that means we are using capital labor ratio in fixed proportion. When capital labor ratio is constant, that means we are using capital and labor in fixed proportion. Suppose I required one unit of capital and two unit of neighbor to produce say uh, 10 unit of output. Okay. So I required this in fixed proportion. This capital neighbor ratio is how much? 1 by 2. If you divide this one, 1 by 2. Okay. 
any other proportion I have, I cannot produce more than this one. I require the ratio 1 by 2. Okay, let's put out this one. So here you take neighbor, here you take uh, capital. So you have two units of neighbor and one unit of capital. Combining these two points, how much output is produced at this point? I'm doing isophone. At this point, 10 unit of output will be produced when I'm combining two unit of neighbor and one unit of capital. Okay. What is isophone? Anyone remember? Isophone. Isocon is the no cost of combination of input, capital and neighbor that produce equal output. Right? It is a no cost of combination of capital and neighbor that produce equal output. Okay? Clear? Yeah? Okay. So that is what I am driving. Isocon for fixed proportion production function. So in the case of hydrodoma model, what kind of production function you have? You have fixed proportion production function. Two marks question. Okay? Fixed proportion production function. That is what I am explaining here. Why we have fixed proportion production function? Because capital output ratio is constant. Since capital output ratio is constant, so capital neighbor ratio will be constant. Okay? And when we are taking capital neighbor ratio to be constant, that means we have fixed proportion production function. This is also called neon tip production function. Okay. Now look here. Suppose I, I now I am drawing the graph. Okay, uh, I am uh, telling you the technique how we draw the graph in case of fixed proportion production function. Okay, suppose I have three units of neighbor and one unit of capital. How much output I can produce? How much output I can produce? If I have one more neighbor, in order to produce ten unit of output, what I require? Capital 1 unit and neighbor 2 unit. This is assuming the 1 by 2. Yes or no? That money I can produce 10 unit of output. Okay. I will use capital neighbor ratio in fixed proportion. Okay. And that proportion will be 1 by 2. If this proportion is 1 by 3, output will change or not? Output will not change because I am using in fixed proportion. Okay. I required 1 by 2 proportion. Half, okay, one by two. For every neighbor, I require half of machine to produce output. Okay, if I have four unit of neighbor, I cannot increase my output production. It will remain same, ten unit. Okay, you join this point. Okay, similarly, if I have two unit of neighbor and two unit of capital, two unit of neighbor and two unit of capital. What is the proportion one? It is not required. Okay. I required, I required when I have two unit of capital, I required four unit of neighbor in order to produce 20 unit of output. Okay. But if I have only two unit of neighbor and two unit of capital, I cannot produce more. I cannot produce more. Okay. If I have three units of neighbor, I cannot touch uh, three units of capital and two units of neighbor, I cannot produce more. I can produce only 10 units. Joining on this point, I get n set production uh, I support. Okay. Here I am producing 10 units of output. And production will be taking place along this day, OR from the OED. Okay, this is production point. Two units of capital and four units of neighbor. Then what will happen? Capital neighbor ratio is constant. What is the capital neighbor ratio? This is 2, this is 4. 1 by 2. Yes or no? Okay. But I can produce 20 units of output. Because I have increased the capital stock and neighbor in the same fixed proportion. Output will increase by 20 from 10 to 20. So this is my new isocon uh, with 20 units of output. Can everyone? Okay, so this is the isoport you have, and if they ask you to write the equation, okay, equation will be like this.
So production factor will be output that you are going to produce will be minimum of okay a k comma b n okay a and b are technical coefficient okay that will be the uh, proportion in this capital never used this is constant a is your technical coefficient b is your technical coefficient okay it represent the proportion in which capital never are used if this is one okay suppose this is one okay so one more one more. look at one unit of capital with one unit of capital okay we have taken a and b so capital proportion is required is a and for never required b okay so this is the production function in case of uh, fixed for uh, uh, you can say unit production function or fixed proportion production function okay now tell me if ak is greater than bn what is the minimum of these two how much output will be produced here yeah, what i am saying proportion of capital in stock that you have is more than proportion of labor force then when you deciding out when you are producing output you will produce how much bn yes or no if you have more more of neighbor and so the more of capital and neighbor is only two output production will be determined by the amount of neighbor okay 10 unit will be produced okay that is what i am saying okay if you have uh, ak is less than bn and output will be determined by amount of capital in the economy okay so for your understanding just remember that okay capital output ratio is constant okay and they can ask the significance of capital output ratio to be constant okay so capital output ratio is constant why it is constant because of assimilator principle that we have taken in the assimilator principle okay incremental capital output ratio is constant okay that means capital output ratio is constant okay when your capital output ratio is constant what is the significance of it okay significance of it, it is that first thing your capital never ratio is fixed second thing the production function that we will be having it is of fixed proportion kind non tip kind okay that means we have to use capital and never in fixed proportion okay so this is what we have so this is the assumption number 8 point okay capital never ratio is fixed Okay. Now write down the uh, ninth assumption. There is perfect competition in both product market and factor market. Eight uh, number you have connect capital labor ratio fix. Then you have fix proportion production function. Fix proportion production function. Then point number nine. There is perfect competition in product and factor market. And I have discussed this with this batch, okay, in two thousand nineteen batch. That when you have perfect competition in product and factor market, then you have constant return to scale in the long run. Okay, you can separate this assumption. Okay, this part I have done with you before also. when you have perfect competition in product and factor market you have constant return to skin in the long run and one more assumption okay that uh, neighbor force growth in neighbor force okay growth in neighbor force is exogenously given okay growth in neighbor force is exogenously given these are the assumption that you have in the model economic growth is the process of accumulating more capital in stock so growth will happen when you have more accumulation of capital in stock or you can say growth in output over time okay is depend on your accumulation of capital in stock this is what we are going to look at okay so have a look at the question okay or you can say have a look at the requirement in equilibrium when the economy is growing because we are doing growth theory and have is also looking at uh, what is the requirement of equilibrium when the economy is growing okay so in order to look at this question 
here in this three issue. Okay. Let me write arrow look at the requirement of equilibrium when the economy is growing. Okay. So in order to look at the requirement of equilibrium, okay, what are the things we require? Okay. Such the economy is growing in equilibrium. Okay. He has raised three questions or three issues. Three issues or questions. First question that he has is how we can achieve steady state. Okay. How we can achieve steady state. So in economic growth, okay, steady state is a normal equilibrium condition where all the variables are growing at a constant rate. That I have discussed in the last lecture. Okay. So first thing he asks the question, okay, when the economy is growing, okay. What are the requirements? First thing is ask the question how we can achieve steady state. Okay, second thing, how we can maintain a steady state. First, you ask the question how we achieve, second, how we maintain. Third thing, what are the natural factors that put ceiling? That put ceiling. On economic growth. Economic growth. Okay. So easy to remember. Okay. First thing, how to achieve steady state, how to maintain a steady state, what are the natural factors that puts in into economic growth. Can you everyone? Okay. So let me finish one more time. Remember the story. If you remember the story, Everything is like you can write on your own, okay? No need to read anything, okay? So, what Hadron is doing? This I have discussed in the introduction also, okay? In the growth theory, this on the computer. In the growth theory, what we require, what we look at, we look at the requirement in equilibrium when the economy is growing, okay? So, Hadron is also doing the same thing. So, Hadron is also looking at, okay, requirement in equilibrium when the economy is growing, okay? So when he is looking at this question, he raises three issues. How to achieve steady state, how to maintain steady state, and what are the natural factors that put ceiling to the growth rate. Okay. To address these three questions, okay, Harold has given three growth rate. Okay. Right now, to address this question, Harold has given three growth rate. Three growth rate. One is your actual growth rate. Second is your warranted growth rate. Third is your natural growth rate. Okay, when when we are talking about actual growth rate, in the definition also you can write the same. Okay. Actual growth rate is determined by the equality of saving and investment. Okay, I repeat it one more time. Actual growth rate is determined by the equality of saving and investment. Before before I proceed, okay. So what Harold has done? Harold has raised three issues. Okay, how to achieve steady state, how to maintain steady state, and what are the natural factor that put ceiling to the growth rate. In order to address that three question, okay, Harold has raised three growth rate. Okay. And that three growth rate is your actual growth rate, variable growth rate, and natural growth rate. Now what I am doing, I am defining these three growth rate. Okay. First, I am defining actual growth rate. What is actual growth rate? It is determined by the equality of saving and investment. Okay. Why? Because we have considered two sector model. In two sector model, if you remember, income is either consume or save. Okay. And aggregate demand is what? Save on a side. So it is determined by the equality of saving and investment. Second assumption, one of the assumptions that we have more is that okay, we have what x entry saving must be equal to x entry investment, and x for saving investment will be equal of course, and we have considered net investment. So we are using on the assumption that they have provided. Can everyone? Yes, no. 
ओके इन्वेस्टमेंट इफ रिमेम्बर इन्वेस्टमेंट बाई डेफिनेशन मीन एडिशन टू कैपिटल स्टॉक ओके इन्वेस्टमेंट बाई डेफिनेशन मीन एडिशन टू कैपिटल स्टॉक सेविंग सिंस वी आर कंसिडरिंग लॉन्ग पीरियड ऑफ टाइम सेविंग इज अ प्रोपोर्सन ऑफ इनकम दिस इज एडिशन सर दैट वी है so this I can write in place of saving I can write this one in place of investment I can write delta K write down you can write it properly on the side like this okay you can write here saving is a proportional income investment by definition means addition to capital stock therefore we can write S Y equal to delta K okay now dividing both side by delta Y I am doing discrete time for simplicity, okay, for our purpose. And you know that growth in output is what by definition delta y over y. This is the growth in output, okay. So here is the equation, and this delta k over delta y is small c, okay. You can write small c. Okay. So this in place of this you write small c, and rearrange it. Let me write here. This one C, okay. Take this one that side. Take this one this side. You will get delta y over y equal to margin profit to sale over what is this capital not to waste or increment in capital not to waste. Okay. This is your G actual growth rate. Okay. Generally we write G equal to S over C. We don't need to write this one. Okay. So what is the actual growth rate? It is the ratio of saving rate and capital output ratio. Okay, this is also called growth in aggregate demand. Why? We have derived it from the aggregate demand equation. Okay, can everyone? Actual growth rate is also called growth in aggregate demand. Write down this one. We are going to use this part. Actual growth rate is also called uh, growth in Aggregate demand. Okay, this part you remember that you will not get confused with that. Okay. Now, second growth rate that we are going to look at is the blended growth rate. Okay. It is the growth rate at which producer are content with what they are producing. Let me repeat. What is blended growth rate? It is that growth rate at which producer are content with what they are producing. Why they are content? Because they are utilizing the capacity fully. When the economy is growing at this rate, okay, then the economy is utilizing capacity fully. So, what is blended growth rate? It is that growth rate, okay, where economy utilizes its capacity fully. Okay, so here you can get full capacity utilization. That is why it is also called interpenio equilibrium. I repeat one more time. Okay, what is blended growth rate? Okay, it is the growth rate at which producer are content with what they are producing. Okay, or you can say it is the growth rate. Okay, in the economy at which capacity is fully utilized. Okay, since capacity is fully utilized, so it is also called interpenio equilibrium. One is writing this much is enough. Okay, and blended growth rate G W. Okay, blended growth rate. Equal to saving over CR. CR is your uh, required capital output ratio. CR is your required capital output ratio. And X is your margin profit to save. Okay. Can you remember? Marginal or average whatever. Okay. Average saving. Okay. See, saving is some proportion of income dividing both side by y. So average saving in the economy or marginal profit to save. It means the same thing when you don't have autonomous saving. Okay. Now coming to the natural growth rate. Okay. So natural growth rate is the maximum growth rate that is possible in the economy. Okay. And this growth rate is associated with change in production. Natural growth rate is associated with change in production with no inflation. And what are the factors that put seen in here? It is the population growth rate and technical progress that put seen in here. 
okay let me repeat one more time what is natural growth rate it is a train in production with no inflation okay it is a maximum growth rate that is possible in the economy and it depend on your population growth rate and technical progress because it is the population growth rate and technical progress that puts sin into the growth okay if you don't remember just remember one line what is natural growth rate it is a maximum growth rate that is possible in the economy okay now i am driving one thing if you remember that other part you can write it so output i can write this as output per worker times net worker okay other other thing that i have used for this one is productivity productivity of labor right output per worker is represent your productivity of the worker okay so here remember productivity of the worker when we mean do sonom model we will use this as a standard of living okay so y by n is your productivity of worker n is your labor force okay take the log log of y equal to log of productivity y by n You have multiplication when you are taking log, it will be minus minus log of n. Okay, then do d over dt because I want to know know how my output is growing over time. Okay, then on what factor is depend? One thing I have seen that it depend on productivity or technique of the economy, and second is the labor force. Okay. D over dt, d over dt, d over dt. Okay. This is what this is my growth in output. Growth in output, okay. And I am looking at natural growth rate. So write n here. Growth in natural output, okay. Depend on so growth in productivity. This term d over dt. When I am taking log of something, it is showing growth of that variable, and that variable is my productivity. Net denote this by mu. Okay. So this is growth in productivity. Anas, this d t is here, okay. This is growth in labor force. Let you know this by n. So natural growth rate depend on your technical progress or growth in productivity and growth in population. Can you remember these two factor, growth in productivity and growth in population or your labor force, put sinning to the growth rate. Okay, can you remember? Yes, no. Okay. Uh, in the modern later on what i will do okay since this is undergraduate program okay i will take u to be zero mu mu to be zero okay productivity growth i will be taking to be zero okay my natural growth rate that is putting sinning in the modern is the growth rate in the population okay i will consider this simplified model then it will be easy for you people to understand when i will be discussing naive thinking here okay So I have actual growth rate, okay, determined by the equality of saving and investment, okay, and this giving me growth in aggregate demand. Then I have variable growth rate. Variable growth rate is the ratio of saving and incremental capital and output ratio. Okay, it is the growth rate at which producer are content with what they are producing. Okay, here capacity is fully utilized, so it is also called interpenuity activity. Yeah. Third growth rate is my maximum possible growth rate that is possible in the economy. Okay, growth cannot be beyond that. So it represents production chain with no inflation. Okay, what are the factor that puts in? It is the growth in productivity and growth in labor force that puts in. And for simplicity, we will take only growth in population force as the maximum possible growth rate that is possible for the economy. Okay, so these three growth rate we have now. The first assumption that I have taken, okay, economy start with equilibrium, okay, full income equilibrium, okay, and we will do that part first. That we will do the iteration part too. So let me do this. So what is the first question that Harold has raised? How to achieve a steady state? Okay, how to achieve a steady state? So first thing, a steady state equilibrium. Okay, this is also found in some of the book. A stable equilibrium with full employment. Now, 
we always start with equilibrium any model we do we will start with equilibrium okay in the static framework when you do comparative static analysis we start with equilibrium then we do it here we are in a dynamic one okay so we will start with steady state equilibrium okay so how to achieve steady state equilibrium we can achieve a steady state equilibrium when your actual growth rate equal to warranted growth rate equal to natural growth rate okay so first issue that he raised okay and how we can achieve a steady state is to equilibrium we can achieve a steady state equilibrium when your actual growth rate equal variated growth rate equal natural growth rate okay look at this with graph here you take time here you can write three growth rates separately or just size growth whatever you want to write okay on the three variable are growing at the same rate g equal g w equal g n everyone so the first question that we raised how to achieve steady state equilibrium so the answer is uh, for that for addressing this three question that he has raised okay he has given a three growth rate okay the first answer that he has given is that we can achieve steady state equilibrium what is steady state equilibrium it is a equilibrium condition the normal where on the variable are growing at the same rate okay It is required that your actual growth rate must be equal to variated growth rate equal to your natural growth rate. Okay, so this they can ask in five marks. You just have to draw this graph. Okay, or they ask you to discuss heterodromo model. Okay, so first you have to give the introduction part that I have given. Assumption in soft, accelerator part right in soft. No need to provide on the graph. Okay, then explanation of the model, then three growth rate, then this graph. That will be sufficient for ten marks. now in the keynes framework okay that we have done in the static framework there is a uniform equilibrium okay keynes static analysis or to the demand determinant so we can have uniform equilibrium okay this part had also had also depicted in the dynamic framework Uniform equilibrium, or you can say, is taken with uniform equilibrium. Hello, that depicted in a dynamic setting. Okay, here you have full uniform equilibrium. Okay, I am not doing iteration today. Okay, iteration I will do tomorrow. Okay, so look at this one. So what is G? G is the actual growth rate of growth in demand, and G W is growth in productivity, or you can say growth in aggregate supply. Okay, can you remember? So when these two, when these two are equal, okay, I can have equilibrium, like in the Keynesian case. But if my growth rate in population is more than growth rate in capacity, okay, capacity means machine. Capital is low. अगर growth rate of population तो net में कितने सी है? Population का growth rate ज़्यादा हो रहा है capacity का growth rate से, ठीक है? तो बहुत सारे work का होगा जो utilize नहीं हो पाएगा क्यों? तो capital neighbour ratio fix है. Can you remember? Capital capital neighbour ratio fix है अगर population growth rate ज़्यादा हो रहा है capacity growth rate से, then what will happen? There will be some neighbour force that cannot be ignored. Because capital neighbor ratio is fixed, okay. So I will be having stable equilibrium because growth in aggregate demand, okay, growth in aggregate demand equal to growth in your aggregate supply or capacity output. This we are saying that when the economy is growing, okay, aggregate demand is growing. Also, your capacity is growing at the same rate. So I will get a stable equilibrium, but population is growing faster than that. Okay, that means some people cannot be employed. When some people cannot be employed, that means you have unemployment in the economy. Why we have unemployment? Because capital labor ratio is fixed. So this is your you take growth here, time here. This is G equal G W, and this is G M. Okay. Can you this part is clear to everyone? Yes, no. Okay. So tomorrow, tomorrow I am going to do knife edge equilibrium. Okay, 
So revise this part, then only you will understand. Actually, I do this thing and I fetch equilibrium at the same time. Okay, because if there is a discontinuity, generally I see that a student used to forget the argument. Okay, so finish revise this one, then only you will be able to understand tomorrow next year. Okay, so I stop here for the day.